the Bitcoin Group, the American original. For over the last 10 seconds, the sharpest Satoshis, the best Bitcoins, the hardest cryptocurrency talk. We'd like to welcome our panelists, Theo Goodman from Proof of Work Media. Good evening, everyone. <laughs> ben from Wales. Hello, Shamai, hello. And I'm Thomas Hunt from the World Crypto Network. <laughs> Moving on to issue one, Bitcoin 5000. The price of Bitcoin surged recently, breaking the $5,000 barrier and perhaps signaling intent to go much higher. Coindesk provides three reasons for this move, including positive technical analysis, the Bitcoin supply halvening of 2020, and market activity. However, there was also a Financial Magnets article released on April Fool's Day claiming that the Bitcoin ETFs had been approved, which just might have been translated into Chinese without a disclaimer. That's right, they added it afterwards. Theo Goodman, what do you think is responsible for Bitcoin's sudden price rise? Uh, I think I'm going to have to agree with uh, Coindesk market activity. Probably was the best answer, one of the three they had as an excuse for the price going up. Uh, there was also the price didn't dump really hard after some of the legacy futures in America were discontinued. That's pretty interesting. Also, the SEC gave guidance on token sales. And even though that was not a real big surprise, what the SEC's opinion on that, um, I think that was generally good news that they just said something and they didn't say, you know, everything is a scam, dump it, or, you know, you have no hope or something like that. And uh, yeah, market activity is always a real good headline for any media outlet. So uh, that basically means it went up for some reason. It went up because people bought it. Ben from Wales. Well, I mean, it, it went up quite a lot um, uh, in quite a short period of time, which again indicates that we're still very illiquid and the price can move up and down um, uh, quite quickly, which is a good thing. Uh, but if you, if you trade the fractal, and then if you look at previous pumps, um, where we are right now is, is a good place to be to buy. Um, and uh, you know, some people would say that it's going to kind of hit the last all-time high at you know, 1,500 or whatever. But I think the, um, the amount of sort of FOMO and things which were around means we could circumvent that, that drop um, and then you know, begin our upward trajectory, as we've done you know, a few times in the past. Um, so you know, go on to you know, trading view or whatever, look at the fractal, look at previous pumps, look at where we are now, compare it to them where it went, and then try and imagine where the Bitcoin price is going to go. So um, yeah, so I, I mean, that obviously there's, you know, there's always news, there's always reasons why these things can happen. But I think the reality is that you know, big players are looking at that fractal and thinking, yeah, the price is going to go up. Is that investment advice? No, that's not investment advice. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Well, I do think the April Fool's Day article is worth mentioning. The real reason the price of Bitcoin is up is because of the MAD tour. Whenever MAD Bitcoins is on tour, the price of Bitcoin always goes up. So plan your buys accordingly. Exit question. The price of Bitcoin this time next week, higher or lower? Theo. Uh, the only correct answer is lower. Dump it. Ben. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Like if it, if it drops or if it goes up a little bit, just be patient, you know, always be patient. Remember that Warren Buffett saying that, you know, the, the market is a, a way for impatient lose money people to lose money to patient people. Hold and just wait a few years. If you can't wait five years to get rich, then you're an idiot. You know. <laughs> it's going higher. Mad Bitcoins is still on tour for the next three weeks. <laughs> Moving on to issue two, lightning five million. The amount of available Lightning on the Lightning Network to be used for transactions continues to climb. And now there's more than $5 million of transactional capacity on the fledgling Reckless Network. User interfaces are being simplified, and new technologies are allowing Lightning channels to be reused without additional fees. Ben, are you bullish about the Lightning Network? I mean, so if you look at the um, tutorials I've done on the World Crypto Network, they've all been using Lightning. Um, so I've got to interact with the technology and I've, I've got to sort of feel how quick and usable it is. Um, so yeah, very bullish on, on, on Lightning. Uh, the technology is fantastic. And um, I went to a talk in New York with Christian Decker and Christian Decker at the beginning of the speech said, this is, you know, this is uh, Lightning Network, it's still a minimal viable product. You know, this is the worst version of Lightning Network we're gonna have. 
We've got lots of innovation, lots of new things which are kind of built into the protocol. And the protocol's designed in such a way that it's very easy to implement new things. Um, so, uh, yeah, no, Lightning, Lightning Network's absolutely fantastic. It's, uh, it's working, uh, and it's still the worst version of Lightning we're going to have. Um, so just wait until, you know, all those improvements are going to come in, and then uh, you, you, it'll be, it really will blow people's minds on how, how, um, how efficient and how well it works. Theo Goodman. I think I'm, I'm definitely bullish on Lightning, but I would say that it's definitely in its current state. It's not vaporware, it's nerdware. It's still really nerdy. It's only for real freaks that kind of get it, like this guy. You know, it's like really for like a small core of Bitcoin people that can understand really how the Lightning Network works at this point. And uh, you know, I was really interested in maybe doing like a gambling app on Lightning, but you don't need to do one on Lightning because just using Lightning Network itself is a gamble. <laughs> Theo's right, the technology is very early, but it's important not to judge the final product by the early product. A lot of people on the other side have said things like lightning's too hard to use or it's too confusing, but give it time. Uh, the uh, recent innovation to add more funds to payment channels is a very good one. Uh, we won't have to create a new payment channel every time you want to use Lightning. It's more like a pneumatic tube. You can keep putting $20 in and keep putting $20 in, and it's just the size of the tube. If you needed a larger tube, you'd have to pay to create one. Exit question, is Lightning an altcoin? Ben. Uh, no, it's not. It's a protocol on top of Bitcoin. Uh, which just allows you to use Bitcoin in a unicast way as opposed to a broadcast way, which is, for a lot of transactions, is ridiculous. Like, why would you want to broadcast your transaction out? Um, to absolutely everyone in the world, does it make any sense? You want to send it directly peer-to-peer. -peer. It is uh, the thing which makes peer-to-peer -peer cash possible. Theo Goodman. Uh, Lightning is as much of an altcoin as a multi-signature transaction is. And those are so hard. If you had a Bitcoin wallet and you had to add multi-signature transactions, you should just give up, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Lightning's not an altcoin. Moving on to issue three, world's main payment system. A new study by Datalight claims that within 10 years, Bitcoin will surely surpass Visa and MasterCard to become the world's main payment system. After a mere 10 years, the report claims already Bitcoin's payment system is superior to conventional international payments and wire transfers. Keeping in mind that technical improvements on Bitcoin continue unabated, the report concludes that Bitcoin is almost certain to become the world's main payment system. Theo Goodman, besides a healthy chorus of, I told you so, is the Data Light report correct? Is Bitcoin and the Lightning Network poised to defeat all comers and take the throne from Visa and MasterCard? Uh, no, I don't think so. I mean, Bitcoin and Lightning definitely have their place. I mean, Bitcoin is good where you, um, you know, you're not allowed to use other payment, other, other payment methods, for example. Um, it's a bare asset, you know, and, and Visa is good where maybe like here in UK or somewhere where it's not such a big issue to buy coffee with your card, then you might just use a visa. So it's good where you know you have, it's censorship resistant. Uh, and Lightning just makes it easier to buy small amounts with censorship resistant money. Whereas uh, the visa rails are good um, in some jurisdictions where it's not really a big issue for people. It could, it could change though, it could become an issue for people here. Uh, it, could be become, it could become an issue because of privacy, it could become an issue because of fees, it could become an issue because of uh, probably not because of Brexit, but it could become an issue for a lot of other Everything's reasons. an issue because yeah, of Brexit, yeah, yeah. come on. Right, but who knows what's going on with that, right? Just some guy Nobody. yelling like, everyone on this side, or something, right? So, but- uh, Come on, people. No, but now. really, but really, like, it's not gonna, I don't think that it's gonna dethrone Visa or, or those systems without them totally collapsing. I don't think that like a bare asset is going to dethrone something like Visa. They're just kind of like apples and oranges. So, of course, Lightning is made for small payments so that you can use it quickly like that. Um, I think we're a long way out from even trying to dethrone something like Visa and all that stuff. Ben from Wales. I don't know, man. I mean, so um, I think a, a decentralized system uh, will always overthrow a centralized system. And you look at sort of non-proprietary software, you know, in the 90s, look at Linux. You look at like Linus Torvalds and his little 
uh, bungalow in, in California, and my man Alan Cox back in Swansea in his tuk to down fisherman's cottage, and they were, they were you know, a threat to Microsoft and IBM and Apple. And then you look at what Linux became, and you look at everyone running Linux on their Android phones, and 95% of the internet being run on Linux. I don't think, I think a proprietary system is always going to be overthrown by a non-proprietary decentralized system. Um, uh, currently, we've obviously still got money which works and it's good, but you know, I hate to be like you know, forecasting doom and gloom, but I think we're due an economic crisis, and if, 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 if that hits, then people... Not if when. Huh? Not if when. No, well, yeah, well, maybe, we're, maybe we're still, yeah. we're, we're just kicking the can down the road, we're still in, in one economic crisis, yeah. Um, but, uh, uh, yeah, when, when that hits, you know, people will be questioning money, and then this time round, there's this alternative money, um, and Gresham's law, you know, good money drives bad, bad money and out and all that sort of stuff. So, um, uh, so no, I think that if, if everything just tinkered on as it's tinkering along now, uh, in, in, you know, in Europe and in, in the West or whatever, um, then, then Bitcoin will continue to be this underground scene. But I think if there's a shock to the system, then, then money and people will flood into Bitcoin and realize it's a far superior form of money. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I, you, can't, you can't be an entrepreneur, proprietary free and open source system, um, no. I think it's important to keep your eye on the prize. Sure, we'll crush Visa and MasterCard, but it won't really matter because they're not the target for Bitcoin. The target for Bitcoin is the central banks and the actual real money. That's who the competition is. So yes, we'll beat Visa, Visa and MasterCard along the way, but no one will care because they'll keep looking at the central banks, the international money, and they'll say Bitcoin's better, and they'll be right. Moving on to issue four, Dogecoin CEO. A Twitter poll looking to find the new CEO of Dogecoin got a little out of hand recently. Competing in the poll were Litecoin's Charlie Lee, Ethereum's Vitalik Buterin, MetalPay's Marshall Hayner, and Tesla Square CEO Elon Musk. Musk won the poll handily, despite a challenge from Hayner, but that's where things got really interesting. Musk himself took to Twitter praising the dog-backed cryptocurrency, saying that it might be his favorite crypto, and it's actually pretty cool. He also changed his Twitter profile to CEO of Dogecoin, seemingly accepting the honor. Despite all logic and good sense, the price of Dogecoin later pumped 134%. Ben from Wales, your thoughts on Elon's dubious honor. Does he mean it, or is he just making with the joking and the funny stuff? Well, I mean, so like, you've, you've got to remember where Elon kind of came from, and he came from PayPal, and PayPal originally was supposed to be something a bit like Bitcoin, but then obviously they, they realized they weren't able to become something like Bitcoin because they, they saw the examples from uh, um, uh, e-gold e and um, the, uh, Digicash. Um, so uh, he's always been aware of Bitcoin. Um, he doesn't want to admit how um, aware or how involved he's been in Bitcoin. Um, so yeah, he, and Doge is great for him because he can kind of admit to people that, yeah, he likes this thing, but no one takes Doge seriously, which means no one needs to take his comments seriously. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Doge itself, Dogecoin itself, I like Dogecoin. I think it's a cool project. It's always been a cool project. It doesn't take itself too seriously. It, Bitcoin, uh, in its essence, has a, a sort of trolly nature, um, which I think Dogecoin kind of encapsulates as well, which is great. Um, so, uh, yeah, no, I think, uh, I think it's, uh, it's cool. It's kind of a nod to everybody that Elon is uh, paying attention to, to Bitcoin and, and, you know, our scene and, um, uh, and you know, the, the Dogecoin community have always been a good community. So, you know, good on them, I'd say. And if it fills their pockets, then well, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, we had uh, Rhett Creighton on the show a couple of weeks ago, and he said much the same thing. In Rhett's view, Elon was signaling to people that now's the time to buy Bitcoin. Mm. Sure, he can't just go out there and say, everyone should buy Bitcoin, you're going to feel bad later. But he tweets about it, and he tweets about it, and now he tweets about Dogecoin, even putting it on his Twitter profile. So if you're not going to listen to Elon Musk, I don't know who you're going to listen to. Theo Goodman. Uh, I think Elon Musk is uh, playing with a flamethrower <laughs> because um, recent, given that recently he had some substantial fines from the SEC regarding some of the other tweets that he made and how that affected the stock price of his company, now he's like playing around with cryptocurrency saying he's a CEO of Dogecoin. As, as funny as it might seem to others, SEC might not think it's very funny, you know? Cause, so, <laughs> I don't know it what's up with that. It did pump over 100%. Maybe yeah. he's got to sell some more flamethrowers, you know? Maybe it's a way to pump out the supply to get rid of that. 
Uh, beyond that, I think that uh, that's interesting what you said, as illogical as it is, or et cetera, et cetera. I mean, that just goes to show that the uh, real power, or not the real power, a lot of the power of a lot of crypto and just a lot of things that we assess, give value to, uh, is subjective and it's not rational, it's not intrinsic, and it's not objective. It's just the meme. It's just that it's good. The uh, British pound is uh, worth money because people believe in it. Of course, it's backed up by the government and everything else. Same thing for US dollar and even Bitcoin. Bitcoin's the big B. Of course, there's a lot of fundamentals, hash rate, et cetera, et cetera. We've been all over that. But a lot of the value is also just subjective. It's just people believe in it. And Dogecoin, well, it has a cool dog. So who has something against that? Theo's right. The only British note that has any value is the five note that has Churchill on the back. It's an interesting <laughs> note. Uh, different than all the other ones, pictures of the queen, less value. Um, but I do agree, he uh, pumped it, he's been messing with the SEC, it's been fun to watch, and uh, I'm not completely biased, even though the boring company is building a tunnel in Las Vegas. It's going to be amazing, you're going to go point to point, underground, uh, another Elon Musk problem uh, project, the boring company, they drill tunnels. It's going I think to be this great. all intersect as well. I think this all kind of plays into the bedrock. So. When you look at you know where we were um, when we were like three hundred dollars or whatever was that 2014, 15, mm -hmm. um, uh, and you looked at the bedrock then and we're all going not not some Reddit if Bitcoin got mentioned in some random show you know, <laughs> um, and now you look at the bedrock and you've got these incredibly influential people who are now interested in Bitcoin and interested in cryptocurrency. Um, you've got you know Jack Dorsey owning Twitter and like Twitter's a thing which allowed someone like Donald Trump to get in power. So the power which the bedrock which has now been laid down by some of these big personalities and some of this big exposure which Bitcoin is having um, is uh, yeah I think it's a, a very safe place for us to kind of sit and then fire up from. So. It's certainly better than it was last time. Everyone saying that Bitcoin was dead and dying and never coming back. Uh, whereas this time you had people such as Barry Silbert uh, saying that this was just a phase. And everyone calling it crypto winter was, I think, a great metaphor uh, for it because it's a season. It's something that passes. Uh, whereas before they were saying more like crypto nuclear meltdown or something uh, quite, that we would never come back you, from. Yeah. If you go on the, the way back machine um, and then you look at like Reddit, um, uh, from that time, you know, pretty much, you know, the same day as well, like hey, April, because um, uh, I think that's when we kind of hit like three hundred dollars or something. And you look at those Reddit posts and then compare them to today's Reddit posts. That's so why I always quite like doing that because you, you get a nice sort of contrast and you realise, you know, the sorts of stories now which we've got are so much bigger than they were back then. Yeah, we used to get excited when a restaurant in Hungary would take Bitcoin. Yeah. That'd be our top story for the day. But okay. uh, now we have massive exchanges taking it, so on and so forth. Moving on to the exit question, what's your favorite altcoin, Dogecoin, Litecoin, or Ethereum? Ben from Wales. What about Monero? Is Monero on like Monero? You can choose any altcoin uh, you want, altcoin just like, like 31 right. flavors, any uh, flavor you want. I like, I like Monero, um, and I like Litecoin, and I think that both of those serve a purpose in serving Bitcoin. Um, and at some point, we might need something like Litecoin uh, if we can't get certain protocol changes. I mean, if, if you remember with the SegWit stuff, um, when we couldn't get SegWit into Bitcoin, um, or we were struggling to get SegWit into Bitcoin, we had it in Litecoin. A lot of people in Bitcoin were, were sort of signaling that they would be willing to move across to Litecoin, and that could be, you know, the, the, the currency we use. So uh, I think they're both important projects which aren't shit coins, and we should give them, you know, credit, and we should, we should support them. Um, but most of the shit coins, obviously, are shit coins. But sorry, excuse my language. Um, but um, no, Monero, Monero and Litecoin, they're, they're okay, you know, in my opinion. Theo Goodman. Uh, of course, uh, I'm going to give more than one answer because now I can shill. Because now I have a chance to shill. So I think the uh, probably one of my favorite altcoins would be Bitcoins because I'm in favor of hyper Bitcoinization and uh, Bitcoins.com. You can check it out. And also uh, Theos is kind of like EOS but better. Theos. <laughs> you have to check on uh, Google to see if these things are real or not <laughs> later on. Uh, but now we're going to move on to prediction or story of the week. Theo, are you ready with a prediction or a story of the week? Oh, I guess so. Um, I don't really have one ready. I would say that um, sometime in the future, Thomas Hunt is going to be uh, in the Mediterranean seas, in the Mediterranean Sea with whales. Oh, good prediction. Good prediction. Ben from Wales, a prediction or a story of the week? Well, once he's finished in the Mediterranean with whales, he's also going to then join us in Wales. 
um, and uh, explore some castles and some uh, ancient uh, sites, which I know you know you like history. So, uh, no, we're really looking forward to hosting him in Wales, and um, we've got some uh, good meetups lined up. So, yeah, that's the story. We're going to do some projects. So, um, I know you haven't got a lightning node, so we're going to set you up a lightning node, um, uh, and uh, we're going to play around with mesh networks. See if we can like blanket my village in um, Bitcoin uh, transaction data. That should be fun. Uh, so no, looking forward to looking forward to Thomas coming down, making some projects, and then um, yeah, should be good. Should be fun. What are the dates? Thomas going to Wales uh, next week. Yep. Oh, wow. Next week, yeah. And all of the predictions are about my travel plans. It's a clean sweep. The mad tour continues tomorrow at 4 a.m. I'm flying to Malta. Woo! Yeah. Uh, so I can do some more interviews in Malta before I pass out in a couple of days. And then I'll be flying back to Wales, like Ben said, uh, to see castles and Stonehenge. It's going to be great. I hope to make it back to the uh, British Museum in London, uh, the best place in the world. You should all go. It's free, or you can even donate five pounds. It's amazing. Uh, but that's about it. We're going to stay on tour, so that means the price of Bitcoin is going to go up. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, thanks to everyone for joining us at home on the pre-recorded one. And uh, even on the one in the back, we've got lots of cameras today. So hopefully it's all going to work out. And thanks to everybody in the audience, too. Uh, this was the Bitcoin group. Woo! All right. And until next time, bye-bye.